Well, my name is uh, Mike Meeker. I've been doing fish farming here on, uh, on the Great Lakes in, in Lake Huron since 1984. And when I started, uh, no one else was, was doing net pen aquaculture here. So it was actually considered a very new and, and innovative thing to do. And of course, there was a significant amount of uh, pessimism as to whether or not it would work. What I'm growing principally now and have for the last 30 years is rainbow trout. People love rainbow trout. There's a culture of eating rainbow trout here. And uh, so that's what I started with. I was on my own from the beginning and uh, just loved what I was doing right from the start. Made a lot of mistakes, of course. Um, and uh, so it's been 30 years of, of uh, making mistakes and fixing them. dealing with mother nature and trying to learn how to get along with her and and keep uh, keep fish growing. The first cage I built uh, was built out of logs um, that I cut in the bush. Uh, I sewed my own net and I used 45 gallon drums for buoyancy to float it. It's It's been an evolution of building stronger and stronger cages but all of those the design is the cage is floating on the surface and the floats are now tubes that float horizontally. So no matter what you do and how strong you build them, those horizontal tubes are always buckling and twisting and moving. And when you've got a, a lot of them put together, like the standard cage site here now is 20, 15 meter square cages, everything is moving in different directions at different times. Big waves puts an enormous amount of stress on the hinges and the structure, the structural strength of the thing. And it's very hard to anchor these because of the, the forces that are working against them. But the second problem, which was actually like a, a major catastrophe, was moving ice. And, and in the spring, in particular here, we can get up to 40 inches of solid ice out there on the, on the lake. And as it melts and starts to break free from the shore, you've got massive ice flows. They're not like icebergs, they're not deep, but there's, they're massive, they can be a square mile or more. And when they start moving around, if they hit those cages that are floating on the surface, it's all over. There's, there's no way to stop it, divert it. Um, it, the cages are done. And that happened to me twice. So the second time that that happened, and I had you know serious damage done to the cages, lost some fish, uh, my wife was also standing on the shore and watching our investment get get broken and snapped and crunched and it's not an easy thing to do uh, to stand there and watch that so i vowed right then that i'm going to come up with a system cave system that will eliminate this risk i designed this cage for my own operations. It was to solve the problems that were the biggest possibility for catastrophic loss. So it's, it was designed for me, but it will work elsewhere because it's the same problems. The hex cage is an enormous improvement on, on first of all, the energy from the surface waves that work on the structure because you only have six vertical tubes that are 30 inches in diameter. So in effect, there is nothing for the waves to act against. Waves will break around that vertical 30 inch diameter spar. And then the only resistance to the wave action is the nets and, and the, the waves can move through the nets. Um, so when you eliminate that resistance for the waves, then you, you eliminate an, an enormous amount of risk for damage to the structure. The other thing about this, this cage is that it's, it's very, very stable in the water. So it, it hardly moves at all. Like the waves break around the spars, which is a critical point, but the, the cage itself barely moves up and down in the wave action because you have a lot of weight down below, like a heavy keel in a ship. It stabilizes the whole structure. So even in big waves, two meter waves, the cage only moves a few inches up and down. So there's very little stress on the hinges which are enormous the hinges are over designed for the amount of, of stress that they'll take so there's very little stress on the hinges and very little stress on the structure itself
you can completely submerge the cage below whatever the level is where the storm waves are affecting the water. Turn one valve and this cage will submerge in a minute and 43 seconds to whatever depth you want it to go. Five feet below the surface or 40 feet below the surface. It will, in a minute and 43 seconds, sink down to that depth, which puts it safe. It makes it safe from anything happening on the surface, ice movement or big waves. It's a, it's a critical thing. So, I mean, you combine the fact that it's much more stable and much more secure in big wave conditions if it's floating on the surface in its normal operating position. But in a minute and 43 seconds, if you don't like what you're seeing or you think a big storm's coming, you open one valve and it goes down to that safe depth. How it's lifted and, and, and lowered, of course, is the critical part of the design. It's plain and simply air. A five horse air compressor, gas powered air compressor. You hook this compressor up to a manifold that controls the airflow into each of the vertical spars and you can lift this cage very simply. You can buy anywhere in the world a five horse or a 10 horse compressor. So that's all you need. It's probably five minutes to re-emerge the cage. And so if you want to buy a bigger compressor, all that it means is that the cage itself is going to rise faster. Different farmers in different locations have different ideal cage sizes. And, and so the, the first cage I designed was, was a hexagon um, uh, with uh, about the, you know, the cubic meters of rearing space that are standard for us here in Ontario. But in the ocean, many people are growing more fish uh, per cage. So this is a, a six-sided cage right now, but all the components are modular. So for a price increase of one third, uh, you can you can make it an eight-sided cage or an octagonal cage, so that that increases the price by a third, but it doubles the rearing space that you that, that you have to grow fish. I've added a tarp assembly, which is easy to deploy and quick because everything for me as a fish farmer everything needs to be done quickly if it's going to be done if it's an innovation and an addition to the cage so you can drop tarps into place to isolate your fish from surface contaminants whether it's algae or or other types of contaminants so you can have, and bring water up from below that that's not doesn't have the algae in it now that's being done in the oceans in in some situations but this, because it's, an, it's a very easy deployment of the, of the tarps and a very simple airlift system to bring the water up you need to keep the fish healthy during the time that they are isolated from the surface waters, um, it can happen quickly and it's very economic because all you're doing is replacing the water in that specific cage. Uh, I've designed it so that there's virtually no chance for this thing to sink to the bottom. It's definitely going to be a consideration in any farmer's mind. Okay, it's fine, you know, it's going down, but how do I know that it's not going to keep going down or that one simple thing going wrong can sink this cage to the bottom and cause problems? And, and that's, that was a very critical part of all of my design consideration, obviously as a farmer. I don't want to have to go down 200 feet and recover this cage, you know. It's easy to sink, fail safe, and happens very quickly. If things are coming at you quickly, two minutes and it's down and safe. And that's an enormous advantage from my perspective, given my experience. There's three buoyancy chambers, three isolated chambers in each spar, which is where your buoyancy is. And they're all separated from each other. Two of them are variable buoyancy chambers. It's 15 meters deep or 50 feet deep. And you can lift this cage by putting air very simply to the lower variable buoyancy chamber so that at least half the cage is out of the water. So if you want to adjust the working platform so that it's six feet out of the water for your people to work safely, if there's you know waves that day, it's very easy to do and it only takes a couple of minutes. And if you want to lift the cage, 20 feet out of the water so that it's shallower 
and and it can be towed into at that point it can be towed into shallower areas and then drop back down to normal operating depth being a farmer myself and and spending 30 years virtually on the water with the fish every day for those 30 years and watching all the things farmers are inevitably the show me kind of people and and I would expect that so um, if they want to you know see what this thing does and and see it in action uh, which I would expect from them I would invite people to come and see the cage in the water uh, the cages in the water and and be able to stand on them and operate them themselves but also we're going to have a, a, a web page which uh, anybody who's interested can go and get more information and then take the next step if they want and call me and, and talk to me directly and come and see the cage. Stand on it, touch it, feel it, which is what I expect farmers in general to want to do.